good enough. She'll love him, sister. Gia. She'll love him. She'll love him. So, all right. Definitely thanks Almighty for today. Sabbath for Zoom's conversation. Appreciate the Almighty. Um, definitely uh, thanks for employment, food, clothing, immune system. We thank the Almighty for that. We got some brothers and sisters that's late to service. Um, I thank Almighty for the small blessings too. Even a, like a job location or even um, just the opportunity to help out people. Like to be in a position to be a blessing to other people. Praise the Almighty. Because that means um, you have an abundance in one level. Maybe it's just five bucks. You have an extra five bucks that you can spare. That the Almighty allows you to have disposable income. To where you could go help out the poor, the needy, or the homeless is a blessing in and of itself. You know, some people, money's so tight, they're struggling. It says, he that have two coats, give to him that have none. But there might be someone that don't have any coats. So they're not even in a position to be a blessing to give. Not that their heart isn't uh, willing, you know, for the people that actually serve the Almighty. Your heart might be willing and you want to help out other people, but you're just not in a position. So definitely thank Almighty for um, allowing me in different times in my life to be in a position to be a blessing to my brothers and sisters, as well as to the unbelievers that's out there feeding the poor, the homeless, their fatherless, the widows, those who are trying to take care of people in the most high. So definitely thank the Almighty for that. Thank the Almighty for the word, allowing us to come into this truth. Allow us to come into the Sabbath. Thanks to the Son, Yeshua Messiah. Thank you for the brothers and sisters out there keeping the commandments. Uh, you know, motivating me. You know, when you see, you go to a different state or a different country, and you see people keeping the commandments of the Most High, that the, the gates of hell will not prevail. That you see that the word goes forth, and he always reserves people that's keeping his commandments. We were talking about Elijah on the job site the other day. We're about to start. How much time we got? We got like one more minute. We're about to get started. There's some people late to service. So um, we're talking about Elijah, how Elijah thought he was the only one. And the Almighty was like, man, I got 7,000 that haven't bowed a knee or kissed the image of, you know, some graven images, which would be dealing with idolatry part four today. But, you know, he thought he was the only one. And it motivates me when you go to different countries and you see that this word will go forth and deal with people's heart and persuade them to repent and knowing that they're keeping the commandments. Knowing that they're keeping the commandments. Knowing that they're not giving in to pagan religion. Knowing that they're really striving to do the most high. So, um, definitely thank the Almighty, you know? Thank the Almighty. All right, we're about to get started. We are about to get started for all the people that's late to service. Lighten it up. So, it's 35. Welcome, welcome to True Hebrews United, the Almighty Yeshua. This year, beloved, holiness, instructors, disciples, discipleship, drill, such about to get into the book. As usual, definitely give all honor. To the Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth, and all that is in therein, um, through His Son Yeshua Hamashiach, the only begotten of the Father, um, Yeshua Hamashiach, right? Definitely give honor through Him. He's the door. Any man that comes any other way, the same as a thief and a uh, uh, thief and a robber. All the people that's Old Testament only, or whatever, right? All the people that's trying to find another way and say, I, I don't need a congregation, and I'll just take this book and run and. You're a thief and a robber. You're a thief and a robber. So, um, through his son, Yishra Mashiach, definitely thank the Almighty. Um, all the brothers and sisters, first I deal with the ministers, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons, 
teaching this word and persuading people to repent from their sin and come to this gospel. I appreciate you guys, those ministers out there. I'm not the only one. I am Teacher Simon trying to get this gospel out here, trying to save some souls before it's too late. You know, there's going to come a time where he told Noah to shut the doors of the ark. And there will become a time where, hey, Bible prophecy, will, some trumpets will be blown and whoever's in is in and whoever's out is out. You know, so we're trying to save souls while it's still time with these people. Um, definitely shout out and love to the brothers and sisters. Keep the Almighty's commandments, statute, judgment, precepts, and ways. And the people on the Facebook that like and share, subscribe, um, comment, emoji on the videos. Please check out the YouTube, True Hebrews United of the Lord Yeshua. Maybe I should get the back. So, I usually in the Bay Area. Right now, I'm in the Phoenix, Tucson area. So, if you are in that area and want to meet up and fellowship, hit us up. So, we do Zoom Sabbath night we have slots or this the 7 30 8 30 9 30 we usually do slots depending on how many people on the zooms we do service sabbath day and uh feel free to enjoy it all right so uh dealing with the recap first i'll deal with the scripture first so with all that said being done let's let the things do the walking and the scriptures do the talking i am at the library right now because i'm here for a temporary work so i can't be as loud as i want but go ahead and give me First John and then uh, that scripture. Then we'll do the recap. First John, chapter five. Let's start at verse twenty-one. First John, chapter five, verse twenty-one. Let's get it. And who's saying shalom? How are you on saying shalom on the page? Is that Sister Whitney? All right. It says, "My little children, keep yourself from idols. Let it be so." So. Uh, once again, keep your idols. We're on part four. Check out part one, then two. Maybe you could jump in at part two, but three. And today, you'll be too far. It's best for you. No problem. I'm not saying you can't watch it, but it's best for you to check out one and um, and read it in order. So the recap, we dealt with idolatry. Um, part one, you can um, have a graven image and not worship it, or you can worship the graven image and not have the image. Either way, it's idolatry, uh, praying hands, uh, doves, any pictures that represents the Almighty, any picture that represents image that represents the Messiah or Amashiach, um, all portraits of that. Nike shoes, um, Starbucks coffee, devils, dirt devil vacuums, all that stuff. Look at where that stuff comes. Video games with... Uh, some of them demons, Thor, the goddess of thunder, all the Thor, uh, 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 Zeus, and all that stuff. Believe that because people worshiped those gods back in the day. They believed those stuff was false. They believed those were gods. Leave all that stuff alone. Video games with that stuff. Leave that stuff alone. Um, be careful with that stuff. Emblems. I think Baby Fat has like an Egyptian god, the eye, the eye of Osiris or something. I used to wear some Osiris shoes. Leave that stuff alone, those false gods. Leave that stuff alone. We need to be pure. That there's a difference between holy and unholy, righteous and unrighteous. Part two, once again, we were dealing with uh, idolatry, dealing with uh, money could be a god, family and friends could be a god, and let them, uh, dealing with anything that you put before the Almighty could be a god. Part three deals with uh, a witchcraft and, a, uh, and divination of horoscopes, uh, pharmaceutical companies, and dealing with that. So now we're going to deal with why it's so bad and how the Almighty dealt with Israel dealing with idolatry. So there will be a lot of reading. I will read fast, but it will show the detriment. Like out of all the sins, that's the detriment of what he did. Uh, the detriment of what Israel did. So Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. We got quite a bit of reading today. So Exodus chapter 20. Verse 1, Exodus 20, verse 1. And the Almighty spoke, uh, spake all these things, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, the likeness of anything that is in heaven above. So we already dealt with that. Although any image dealing with the Amashiach is 
of your graven image, your false, your idol, idol worshiper, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is under the water of the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself or serve them, for I am the Lord thy God, a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on, on the children to the third and fourth generation, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the of the Almighty thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless and take his name in vain. So, dealing with idolatry, the first one. Now, let's go to Judges chapter 2. Judges chapter 2. Now, this is after they came in to the land, and Joshua brought them into the land because Moses died because he smote the rock and didn't sanctify the Almighty in the midst of his people. So, now this is Judges after Joshua and the elders died. And this is why it's so important to install the things of the Most High in your children. And this is why it's so important to promote your children to um, develop their own relationship with the Most High. Judges chapter 2. Verse 10, and also all the generation that were gathered unto the fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Almighty, nor yet the works that he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did Israel inside of the Almighty and served Balaam. Uh-oh. Right after Joshua and elders died, they already went into idolatry. And the Almighty, and, and they forsook the Almighty Lord uh, Yah of their fathers which brought them out of the land of Egypt and uh and followed other gods and the gods of the people that were around about them and, and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger and they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Asheroth. Those video games have Asheroth and Baal in a lot of these video games, so you guys gotta let that stuff go. And the anger of the Almighty was hot against Israel and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers and he sold them into the hands of the enemies around about so they could not no longer uh, stand before their enemies. Whosoever they went out, the hand of the Almighty was against them for evil, as he said. Wherever they went, the Almighty's hand was against them for evil. You go to the store, you pay over price. You go to the gas station, you pay over price. You try to go to anything you do, the Almighty is against you. Your, your car breaks down and the tow truck overcharges you, whatever, right? Every single step you do, the Almighty is against you. And the Lord said, as the Lord hath sworn unto them, that they were, uh, they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Lord raised up judges and delivered them out of the hand of them that spoiled them. And they would not hearken unto the ju to their judges, but they went after whore and after other gods and bowed themselves unto them and turned quickly out of the way which the fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not so. And when the Almighty raised up judges, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For repent the Lord because he, the groaning by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. So he didn't want to chastise. It, it, when we see our children and we give them spankings, we don't want to do it, but we know they need it. Let's keep going. When it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned to the corrupted themselves more than their fathers following other gods and served them and bowed down unto them and ceased not of their own doing from their, their stubborn way. And the anger of the Lord was against Israel and said, because they... That this people have transgressed against my covenant, and I commanded that fathers have not hearkened unto their voice. I will not henceforth drive any out from before them of the nations that Joshua left and when he died. So Israel, when you see all the land that is conquered and you see the maps of uh, Israel, all the families, that wasn't even their full extent. They never got to get all of Israel. That's not going to happen until he sets up his kingdom. Because as soon as Joshua died... And, jo and when before Joshua died, the Almighty told him, there is a lot more land. They, you guys haven't even got half of the land. So there was way more land they were supposed to get. So whenever you see those maps of where all the tribes were, that wasn't the full extent of what he wanted. Let's keep going. So, chapter 3, verse 5. And the children of Israel dealt among the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Aramites and the Perizzites and the Hevites and the Jubasites. Because they didn't kick them out of the land like the Almighty told them to destroy them. They made them tributaries and they let them stay in the land as long as they gave them gold and silver. And that's not what he told them to do. He says to wipe these people out, kick these people out of the land. And they took their daughters to be their wives and gave their daughters to be their sons and serve uh, their gods. 
when the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Almighty and forgot the Lord their God and served Balaam at, at the groves. Therefore, the angel of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them to the hand of Kishoresadim, king of the Macedonia, and the children of Israel served Kishoresadim eight years. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer, and the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Cain as Caleb's younger brother, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, and he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Kershaw-Rithiam, king of Macedonia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Kershaw-Rithiam. I say it different every time. And the Lord and the land had rest forty years, and Othniel the son of Canaan died. Let's keep going. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord strengthened Eli, king of Moab, against Israel because they done evil in the sight of the Almighty. And he gathered unto them the children of Ammon and Amalek. And when they smote Israel, they possessed the city of the palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eli, king of Moab, 18 years. So the first time it was 8 years. Next time it was 18 years. So we see that once a judge died, then the people had no instruction and they went to go whoring after other gods. This is also to show you why Christ, Amashiach, what they call Christ, is going to be an eternal priesthood and a prophet and the king. He will never leave and never die. And Israel will always be in righteous because we see a judge will rise and they'll be obeying. They'll break down the groves and whatnot. We're going to deal with kings and chronicles. And when there was a righteous king, they'll cut down the groves and they'll cut down these false temples and the graven image. And the people will live in righteous. But as soon as he died, once again, they go back to wickedness, certain false gods. So, now we need to deal with, uh, let's deal with the shout outs. And then we'll do with Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to tie with Israel and Judah, the main sins with them. I got them kicked out of the land. So, shout outs. Keturah, Karen, Vince, Jamie, DeGianolo, Andre, Idean, Sachar, Israel, Claudia, Maseas, Reese, Lindsay, Shannon, Brown. I appreciate you guys. I want you guys to make it into the kingdom. Crystal Mills, I appreciate you. I haven't seen your name before, but I appreciate you. I want you to make it into the kingdom. So I'm going to read Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to read fast. It's a long chapter, so I'm going to be long-winded. Hopefully, I don't yawn too long because... When you go on when you read, is usually when you're not getting enough oxygen as you're reading. And so sometimes it's good to stand up. If you ever notice right when you start reading out loud and you'll yawn, it's not because you're tired. Your body just requires more oxygen. All right, Deuteronomy 28. Let's get it. Let's get it. These walls are thin, so I can, like, hear the other rooms conversation. Deuteronomy 28. Now check out these blessings and these curses. We're going to read this whole chapter and understand these blessings and curses. And then what triggered this? What triggered Deuteronomy 28? And it came to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy Yah and observe all and do all his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord thy God would uh, set thee on high above all the nations of the earth, and the blessing shall come upon thee, and overtake thee, and thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Blessed thou shalt be in the city, blessed thou shalt be in the field, blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy ground, the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of the kind, the flocks of the sheep. Blessed shalt thou be in the basket, and thy store. Thou shalt be when uh, that blessed shalt thou be when I cometh in, and blessed shalt thou be when I go without. Thou shalt cause thy enemies to rise up against thee, and be smitten before thy face, and thou shalt come up against thee one way, and thou shalt uh, flee before thee seven ways. It happened to Brother Vince. Two people came up against Brother Vince, and two people the Almighty just wiped out of the way like a dirty dish. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and the set of thy own hand, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. He hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways, all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by thy name of the Lord, and they shall shall be afraid of thee. This was supposed to happen. We ain't going to get this in the kingdom later on, but this was supposed to happen before them having new earth and new Jerusalem. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in all the goods, the fruit of thy body, the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of the ground, the fruit of the land, swear unto thy father shall give thee. Also too, that's why our women have a hard time growing their hair and making their hair healthy. Not only because they put poison in their hair, but the Almighty said, will bless us. We have the highest uh, 
death rate, whether through children or the mother in childbirth, I believe that's by design because it's malpractice when it comes to black people in the hospital. So you Hebrews out there, if you could do home birth, do home birth. If you could get a midwife, please. They will not tell you how. We are strong people. There's no way more of us is dying. They neglect Hebrew and black mothers in the hospital and their children. This is why we have the highest death rate out of every nationality. And dealing with you women with the BBLs, and I'm getting sidetracked. It. Have you ever noticed the people that suffer more for BBLs is Hebrews that get this stuff done? Right? You don't think that by design or intentionally some of these doctors are racist? And just because you paying them money, you don't think by... Why don't we see an influx of white and Mexicans and Hispanic? And a lot of Mexicans be getting BBOs too. I know it's a lot, like a lot. But anyway, you don't see all that. But we see a whole bunch of black people having these complications. We see a whole bunch of black people having complications when they're giving birth at a hospital. And they're dying. Or they, they bled to death. And they go, oh, and they, come on now. Let's not be dumb. We are strong. What sport do we not dominate? We are strong people. Our women are strong. There's no way. It's called male practice. So, male practice. There we go. Hopefully I pronounced it right. So, this is part of the curses. You're cursed when you go in the hospital and you're cursed when you leave, right? Well, let's keep going. All right. Verse 11. And the Lord shall make, uh, verse 12. The Lord shall open the good treasures in the heaven, shall give the rain in the land in the season, and bless and bless all the works of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not be the bar, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be a below. We are below. Every place we go, we are below. I'll deal with this in a little bit. If thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command you this day to observe and do them, thou shalt not go aside in any of the words which I command you this day of the right hand or to the left, and go after other gods and serve them. But... Thou shalt come to that it shall come to pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God and observe all his commandments and statutes which I command you this day that you sh all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Cursed shall thou be in the city, cursed thou shalt be in the field, cursed thou shalt thou be that bastard in the store. Let's just say you think you made it and you bought a house. You bought a house. Check how many times when you send an appraiser out and all the other different nationality houses in like manner, he appraises it for. 700,000. When you go to try to sell your house, he only appraised yours for 620. There's been lawsuits because they will have an appraiser come and, and Hebrew or black people will have a white person act like they're the owner of the house because the appraiser come and don't know who owned the house and they'll appraise it higher and then they'll get another time and they'll show up and then they appraise it for thousands, like hundreds of thousand dollars lower than what it's really worth. So that even you owning a house, trying to sell a house, curse shall y'all be. Every place. I've been to places where because I walk in there, if someone says, oh, I only paid this much, then I go into this store and they see me and they want to pay me $10 more. They want to charge me $10 more. They call it the black tax. Curse shall thou be when that goeth out. Curse shall thou be when thou cometh in. Let's keep going. Um, verse 18. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy womb, and the fruit of thy land, and the increase of thy kind, and the fox of the sheep. And we just deal with, I'm just going to break this down a little bit. Uh, back in the day, there wasn't a whole bunch of people with skin problems. There wasn't a whole bunch of people with eczema. There, I know some of it is on their food. Uh, he, look at pork. Who suffers more than every other nation for eating pork? Hebrew people. Who was the commandment given to? Hebrew people. So who suffered more for breaking that commandment? Hebrew people. You want, oh, my kid's autistic and this and that. A lot of these things didn't exist 100 years ago. I know it's the food. I know it's the 5G. I know it's the fluoride in the water. I know there's other variables. But sinning against the Most High is, a, as, is the main variable, right? So let's keep going. Cursed shall thou be when thou cometh in. Cursed shall thou be when thou goeth out. The Lord shall sin upon thee, cursing and vexations and rebukes. And all that said thy hand to do until thou be destroyed, until thou perish quickly before the wickedness of thy doing, wherefore thou hast forsaken. The Lord shall make thee, uh, uh, make the pestilence cleave unto thee, until thou consume thee from off the land, wherefore thou go and possess. The Lord shall might thee with consumption and with fever and with inflammation and with burnings and with the sword and with blasting and with mildew and pursue you until they perish. See? 
a lot of the stuff we have, oh, I got this or I got this and allergies and stuff. And I'm not saying we naturally sin, but this is a curse unto his people. So let's keep going. The heavens over thee shall be as brass and the earth under thee shall be as iron. The Lord will make thee rain at thy land like powder and dust for the heaven shall, uh, it shall come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thy enemies and thou shalt go away against them and flee seven ways before them and and thou shalt be removed into all kingdoms of the earth. All kingdoms of the earth, right? I'm not going to really deal with this part, who's the Hebrews and whatnot, but it says you shall be cursed. What caused this? We're going to deal with that in a little bit. And thy carcass shall be meat unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the earth, and no man uh, shall fray them away. The Lord will smite with thee with the box of Egypt and with the emeralds and with the scabs and with itch and with the which thou cannot be healed. A lot of Hebrew people have things. And they say, oh, it's genetic? No, there's a curse on to Hebrew people. This curse is to this day on to Hebrew people. We have problems that other nationalities may have the problems, but not to the severity that we have it because this is our punishment. Let's keep going. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of hearts. Thou shalt grope at new day and thou shalt bind and grope in the darkness. Thou shalt not prosper in thy ways and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. No man shall save thee. Look at how they've been treated in Haiti to this day. Always oppressed. Jamaica, always oppressed. The he how many more white people got to kill unarmed black people? You see, they just get always oppressed. Look at how black people are treated in Australia. Look how black people are treated in Canada. Look how Africans treat black Hebrew people when they're in Africa. Go to Portugal. Go to France. Be this color and go to any part of the world and see how you get treated. Think about it. Let's keep going. Thou shalt be a wife and another man shall lay with her. Yeah, when we were on the plantations, they did that. Thou shalt build a house and thou shalt not dwell there and thou shalt plant a vineyard and thou shalt not gather the grapes. Thy ox shall be slain before thy eyes, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Thy donkey shall be violently taken away from before thee, and thou shalt, uh, shalt not be restored. Thy sheep shall be given unto thy enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue. Thy sons and daughters shall be given unto another people. And thy eyes shall look and frail for long in front of them, and, and thou shalt, uh, that, uh, and shall, not, uh, shall be no might in thy hand. Yes, you're on that plantation, and your kids that are six or seven or eight, your daughter and whatnot, get sold to a different plantation. And you're longing after your kids, knowing you're never going to see your kids again. Let's keep going. It is much better for Israel just to obey. The fruit of thy land and the fruit of thy labors, and there shall be a nation unto thy knoweth not eat up. And thou shalt only oppress and, and, and uh, thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Thou shalt be uh, mad for the sight of thy eyes, what thou shalt see. And the Lord shall smite thy knees and thy legs in a botch that cannot be healed from the sole of thy feet to the top of thy head. This is what I'm saying. There's a lot of things that Hebrew have, sicknesses or diseases or body aches and knee pain and whatnot. Intentionally, because this curse is on you. Let's keep going. Let's, let's deal with this, how long this lasts too. The Lord shall bring thee in thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither nor thy fathers have known and thou shalt serve other gods of wood and stone. Why did black people celebrate Christmas? Did, did black people bring Christmas over here? Thanksgiving, Valentine's Day? It, 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 when, we, when we came off the slave ships, were we keeping those days? You serving false gods. We dealt with pagan religion and pagan false gods on uh, day one of idolatry. Thou shalt become an astonishment and a proverb. Like they say, the ninja word. Oh, that's ninja rigged. Oh, you're a ghetto. Right? Let's keep going. Um, and, and a byword among all nations, whether thou shalt lead thee. The, the the derogatory word for Hebrew people, other nationalities use that, like Indians. When you go to India, they'll be like, they call Hebrew people black monkey. That's what they call you. When Hawaiians, we've done nothing to Hawaiian people. Hawaiians have a derogatory word for Hebrew people. We have done nothing to Hawaii. Do we get a laser? And laser off all those houses last year, this year? Do we laser your whole land and burn your whole land with the laser, a satellite? Do we do that? Or a plane that has a laser on it? They already tell you they have planes that can shoot lasers and cause fires. Do we do that? Hebrew people didn't do that. So why do you have derogatory words for us? It says everywhere we go, right? Let's keep going. 
So that's your uh, verse. Verse 38. Thou shalt carry much seed into the field, and thou shalt gather but little. The locust shall consume it. Thou shalt plant a vineyard and dress it. Thou shalt neither drink the wine nor the grapes, for the worm shall eat them. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, and thou shalt anoint thyself with oil, and, and thy oil shall cast thy fruit. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, and thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. All the trees of thy fruit of the land shall the locust consume. The strangers within thee shall get thee above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. You see uh, Middle Easterns come in and set up uh, a whole bunch of gas stations and liquor stores in your neighborhood. You see Chinese people come here. And set up a whole bunch of nail salons and 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 uh, uh, hair hair selling hair products in your neighborhood. You see Ethiopians setting businesses in your neighborhood. Everyone sets up stuff in the Hebrew community and succeeds, but the Hebrew people in the community. Think about it. Let's keep going. Thou uh, verse forty four. He shall lend, and 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 thou shalt not. Uh, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all the curses shall come upon thee, and pursue you, and overtake you, till thou be consumed, because thou hearken not unto the voice of the Lord thy Yah, to keep his commandments and statutes which I command thee. Thou shalt be upon thee for a sign and a wonder upon thy seed forever. That means that we will always be below. Until Amashiach blows those trumpets and he sets up new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Yes, we do our, as we keep the commandments like Daniel, Meshach, Abednego, and Rashak, the Almighty will, will take care of his righteous people. But the majority of Israel that's living in sin, you will be below. You will be below. We will, Jamaica will never be a prophet. Haiti. Everyone where that we went, we will never exceed and be above. Because it says this will be upon your seed forever. Until he sets up new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. These curses, the almighty cursed Africa. Remember? In the time of Noah. He cursed Africa, right? Ham. And it says your seed, it says you shall be servants upon servants. What nation isn't getting diamonds and gold and uranium and, and taking all their resources? How is Africa is a servant of servants? Everyone profits from Africa, but Africa. That curse is still here to this day. Let's keep going. Forever. And that shall be upon thee for a sign and wonder upon thy seed forever. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of the heart and abundance of all things. Thou, sh thou shalt, uh, therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send thee against thee in hunger and in thirst and nakedness and want of all things. He shall put a yoke upon, upon thy neck until they destroy you. And what's weird is when you serve the Almighty and I started a moving company, People were cool with me when I was broke and struggling. But once I started a moving company and they see that I was making more money than them, these nationalities, for some reason, didn't like me. They are so accustomed to Hebrews being below. And they're cool with you with your below. But when your equal are greater than them, they can't. It, cognitive dissonance kicks in and they can't handle that. They can't accept the fact. Because every invention like the washing machine and the train, the engine and the engine that was in the airplane and the things that detect radiation and peanut butter and Coca-Cola and all the inventions we make, we just get bought out and no one knows that it started from a Hebrew person. All you know is all the history already told you is that you've been oppressed your whole life. And then when you actually exceed, they can't stand that. They can't stand that. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Verse 50. A nation fierce and customish, who are not sure regard a person or old, nor shoot favor unto the young, and he shall eat the fruit, uh, and he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, the fruit of thy land, and thou shalt be destroyed, which also thou shalt not leave either corn nor wine, nor increase of thy kind in flocks, until they be destroyed. I shall besiege thee in all the gates, and the high and fence walls come down, wherefore thou trustest, 
and thou for all thy land, he shall besiege thee in all thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. This is all going to tie into idolatry. Just wait. It's coming. Let's keep going. Thou shalt eat of the fruit of thy own body, the flesh of thy sons and thy daughters. And that did happen. And which the Lord thy God shall give thee the seed with straightness, wherefore thy enemies shall destroy thee, so that a man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil towards his brother and towards the wife of his bosom, towards the remnant of his children which he shall leave, and, and so that he will not give to any of them the flesh of his children whom he shall eat, because he hath nothing left in the siege. A straight way, wherefore thy enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. Tender, a tender and delicate woman among you, which shall not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for her delicacy and tenderness. Her eyes shall be evil towards her husband of her bosom, and towards her son, and towards her daughter, and towards her young one that cometh from between her feet, and towards her young, her children, which she shall bear, and she shall eat them. For the want of things secretly in the seed and straightness, wherefore the enemy shall distress thee in the gates. And if thou shalt not observe to do all the works which the Lord shall have written in this book, thou may fear the Lord, a uh, glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful, and the plagues of thy seed, and great plagues of the long, uh, long continents, and the sore sickness, and long continents. Moreover, I will bring upon thee the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall plead to thee every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law. Then will I bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Do you wonder why a lot of Hebrews suffer different sicknesses? It says, this curse shall be upon you forever. Let's keep going. And thou shalt be left few in number, which we are. Wherefore, you were as the stars of heaven for multitude, because thou would not avoid the face of the Lord. And it shall come to pass, as the Lord rejoice over you to do you good and multiply you. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you. He will be happy and joyful to destroy you and bring you to nothing, to naught, that you shall be plucked off of the land where you are going to possess. And the Lord shall scatter you among all people from one end of the earth even to the other. That only happened one time in history. Let's keep going. And there shall thou serve other gods, the Christmas and the Thanksgiving. And the Valentine's Day, and your 4th of July, and your Independence Day, and whatever day, your Halloween, you're going to go to wherever you get scattered. You're going to serve these other gods, right? Gods, which I have not known, even wood and stone. And among these nations, I shall find no ease. So wherever we go into slavery, we're not going to find ease. Neither shall thy still the feet for has. For the Lord will give thee trembling of heart and felling of eyes and sorrow of mind. Yeah, let me go to some place deep in Mississippi and get pulled over by a white cop. And see if I have no anxiety whatsoever. See if he can't lie and say, oh, I thought he was grabbing a gun when I said, hey, can I see your driver's license and registration? And I go to the glove compartment and he shoots me. And I was like, oh, I thought he was grabbing a gun, even though I was just getting the registration and following instructions. And then at worst case scenario, he gets fired. And then most of them could go on and get hired at a different police station. Yeah, so you're saying that as a black, as a Hebrew person getting pulled over by uh, white cops and a white person getting pulled over by white cops, it's the same thing. It's the totally the same. No anxiety, no stress, no rest. We just fully rested, fully at ease. No, we know that's not the same. That's why I keep telling you to get out of Babylon. This ain't your land. I don't know why you like the land of your oppressor so much. I don't get it. I don't get why you join their service. I don't get why you want a 4th uh, of July and whatnot. You guys be wearing suits and dresses with red, white, and blue and all this stuff. Why do you love your oppressor? Why do you have Stockholm Syndrome? Get out of that stuff. It, we're looking for a new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. And if you're a Gentile, why would you be a patriot of a wicked nation? He's going to reward a double portion. It's the most wicked nation on the planet. Let's keep going. Verse... 65. And among the nations thou shalt find no ease, thou shalt sow thy free, shall have no rest, but the Lord shall give thee a trembling heart, and fill in eyes and sorrow, and the life shall hang in night, and thou shalt fear it night and day, and thou shalt have no assurance of life. And in the morning thou shalt say, Would to God it was evening, and at the evening thou shalt say, Would to God it was morning. The fear of thy heart, wherefore thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thy eyes thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, which is captivity, 
by with ships. That only happened one time where you guys spread from one end of the earth to another. By the where for I spake, thou shalt see it no more again. There shall you be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. And during the time of Jeremiah, we went into Africa to escape Babylon, and we flew on into Africa to the time of Romans rule. When Romans came, a lot of us fled into Africa, and during the transact slave trade, we got sent from one earth to another, right? So, what triggered this, though? What triggered this spreading from one in the earth to another? We're going to deal with two situations. We have Israel and we have Judah. Now, remember, Solomon had many wives and he made graven images when he was old. And so he says, you know what? I'm going to take 10 of the tribes from you. I'm going to take 10 of the tribes from you. You're going to keep Judah. And Benjamin kind of still rode with them because their land was kind of encircled in Judah at the time. If you look at the map. So he took 10 tribes. So the capital of Judah was Jerusalem, the capital city. You follow me? Every country has a capital. Like ours is Washington, D.C. And every different country has a capital city. And the capital of Israel was Samaria. So keep that in mind. All right. Now, 2 Kings chapter 16. Now, every once in a while... Because I'm not going to deal with, uh, there's a lot of reading in our room. So I'm going to explain some of this to you. Every once in a while, the king of Israel and the king of Judah, when that first happened, he took the kings and Jeroboam and Rehoboam were the kings because Solomon died. They were trying to get the kingdom back and restore it. So there were times where Israel and Judah were at war with each other. And there were some times where Judah beat Israel, and there were some times where Israel beat Judah. Not to where they took the whole land, but they just beat them in battle, and they retreated and went back to their land. Now, there was a time where Israel came up against Judah, because Israel mainly had sinner kings. And every once in a while, Judah had some good kings that served the Almighty and bad kings. But the majority of times, they, for the most part, 50% of the times, I haven't counted, they probably 50, 60% of the times, they had good kings. And Israel, like, only probably... Three kings, like maybe 20% of the time, they had kings that lived righteous. Majority of them were evil, right? So there was times where Israel would line up with some Gentiles to fight Judah and whatnot. And there was a time where they fought, beat Judah, and they went into uh, Jerusalem and took vessels of the Almighty out the temple when the temple was made during the time of Jerusalem. And they had, not all of them, but they had things of the Most High, sanctified, holy things of the Most High, into their possession. Let's keep going. Second Kings chapter 16. Let's do it. Now I'm going to read fast and I'm not going to break it down too much to the end. In the 17th year of Pekah, the son of Remia, Ahaz, the king of Jotham, king of Judah, began to reign. 20 years old when Ahab, uh, Ahaz had began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem, and did that which was right in the sight of the Almighty, like David his father, and walked in the ways of the uh, but he walked in the ways of the king of Israel, yet he made his sons to pass through the fire. So apparently not like David afterwards. According to the abomination of the heathen and whom the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed uh, uh, burnt incense in high places and under every green tree. And Rezah king of Syria and Pekah king of Ramah king of Israel, Ramah king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome it. And at that time, Rezan, king of Syria, recovered Elah from Syria and drave the Jews from Elah. And the Syrians came to Elah and dwelt there unto this day. And Ahaz sent messengers unto Telapia, king of Syria, saying, I have sent thy servant and thy son. Come and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria, out of the hand of the king of Israel, who rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold, and he found in the house of the Lord and the treasures of the king's house. We sent to present uh, present to the king of Syria. And the king of Syria hearkened unto him, and the king of Syria went up against Damascus and took it and carried the people out uh, captive to Kir and slew Rezin. And the king of Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Telepreleser, king of Assyria, and he saw the altar of Damascus. And king Ahaz sent to Uriah the priest to fashion an altar and pattern of it according to the workmanship thereof. And Uriah the priest built an altar according to the king of Ahaz and sent to Damascus. So Uriah the priest made against the, made it against the king of Ahaz came from Damascus. And when the king of, was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached the altar and offered therein. And he burnt 
uh, his burnt offering and meat offering, poured his drink offering, sprinkled the blood and peace offering upon the altar. And he brought also the brazen altar, which was before the Lord from the forefront of the house between the altar of the house of the Lord. And it put it on the north side of the altar. So now they took the things of the most high Israel took the things of the most high and they built an offer and they used it to offer up to false gods. This is how bad the idolatry got. Let's keep going. And, um, and the king of Ahaz commanded Uriah the priest, saying, Upon this great altar burn the morning and, uh, burnt offering, and the eating burnt offering, the king uh, and king's burnt sacrifice, and the meat offering and burnt offering of all the people of the land, and the meat offering and the drink offering, and sprinkle the blood and burnt offering and burnt sacrifice and brazen altar uh, shall be for me to inquire. Thus did Uriah the priest, according to all the king Ahaz commanded, and the king Ahaz cut the borders of the brazen offering, and moved it laver from off them and took down the sea of the brazen oxen which were on it and put it onto the pavement of stone and the cover for the sabbath that they had built for in the house and the king's entry without and turned turned he the house of the lord for the king of the Syria. now the rest of the acts of ahab which he did they are not written in the book of the chronicles of king of judah and he had slept with his father and buried with his father in the city of david and hezekiah his son raised in his stead so now they took the things of the Most High, made an offer, and offered to the Most High. Now, chapter 17, check what happened when Israel did that. In the twentieth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hosea, the king of Eli, reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. Remember Samaria. And he did that which was evil in sight of the Lord, but none of the kings of Israel, that, but not as other the kings of Israel that were before him. Against him came up Shazar, king of Assyria, and Hosea, uh, Became his servant and gave him presents. And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hosea, and for he had sent messengers. So the king of Egypt brought the presents of the king of Assyria, which he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him. And the king of Assyria came throughout all the land and went up to Samaria and besieged it three years. And the ninth year of Hosea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria. This is Israel. And placed them in Haloth in the harbor by the river of Gozan. And this all ties down to the Sumerian that was at the well when Amashia came on the scene. This shows how that happened. For it was so when the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord by their Yah and brought them up out of the land of Egypt from under the hand of Pharaoh's Egypt and had feared other gods and walked in the statues of the heathen Lord, cast them uh, cast them out from before the children of Israel and of the kings of Israel which they had made. And the children of Israel did uh, did secretly those things which were not right against the Lord thy, their Yah. And they built them a high place in the cities, in the tower, in the watchmen, and they in the fenced city. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill under every green tree. And they, they burnt incense in all the high places as did the heathen of whom the Lord carried away before them and wrought wicked things to perform the Lord's anger. For they serve idol gods, wherefore the Lord hath said unto him, You shall do uh, not do this thing. Uh, yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah, but all uh, by all the prophets and all the seers, saying, Turn ye from your evil ways, and keep my commandments and my statutes according to the law that I commanded your fathers, which I sent unto you by the servants of the prophet. Notwithstanding, they, they would, uh, would not hear, but harden their necks like the neck of their fathers, and did not believe their Yah. And they rejected the, the statutes of the covenant which he made unto their fathers and the testimony which they testimony against them. And they followed vanity and became vain and went after the heathen were round about concerning whom the Lord charged and they should not do right. And they left the commandments of the Lord their God and made a molten image and two calves and made the grove and worship all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. There was no extent to how much idolatry they had. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire and use divination and enchantment and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord and provoke them. Therefore, the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. And there was none left but the tribe of Judah only. All ten tribes got went into captivity because of idolatry. All ten tribes. This was part of the fulfillment of Deuteronomy 28. This wasn't all of it. This is part of it. We're going to get into Judah in a little bit, right? Only Judah was left. But look what happened. 
And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted it and delivered them into the hands of the spoil and cast them out of his sight. And he rent Israel from the house of David that they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king. And Jeroboam drave Israel from following the Lord and made, the sin, uh, made them sin a great sin. And the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did depart not from them. Until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight. And he said, by all his servants, the prophets, so was Israel carried away out of this land unto Syria until this day. Israel never came back. There was remnants of the different tribes that ended up flowing into Judah when Amashia came on the scene. But Israel never recovered. They never occupied Samaria again because of their graven images, because of their idolatry. This was the breaking point. You took my vessels out of my temple and you want to worship other gods with it? He says he took them out of land unto this day. But let's keep going. And the king of Syria brought men of Babylon and Chutha and Hava and Hama and served them and placed them there. Kind of like white people occupy here, right? But the Native Americans used to be here, but they're wiped out. But the same thing. So Israel, Israel land got occupied by Gentiles. And we saw all going to tie to the woman on the well a little bit. And a place in Samaria instead of the children of Israel. So they got taken. Kind of like Israel is replaced by Gentiles right now. He, he, the true Hebrews aren't in Israel right now. Those Israelis are Khazars. They're Turkish people. They're Oxenoxes. They're Gentiles. The Gentiles occupy Israel to this day. This is what happened. Let's keep going. Instead of the children of Israel, and they possessed Samaria and dwelt into cities. And so it was in the beginning that dwelling there, they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, and they slew some of them. Wherefore they spake unto the kings of Israel, saying, These nations that thou remove have placed the cities of Samaria, know not the matter of the God of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because they know not the matter of the God. Then the king of Syria carried uh, one of the priests, which he brought thence, and let them go and dwell in the land. So they took a priest. From Israel and sent them to the land and says, Hey, what, what gods are here? We don't know how to serve your gods. Then one of the priests whom they carried away to Samir came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how to fear the Lord. How about every nation made gods of their own and put them in the house of their high places? And the Samaritans, the Samaritans, he made every nation of their cities wherefore they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sakoth, and the men of Kuth and Negra, and the men of Hama, and the and Hashima, and the Evites made Nebaz and Tertok, and the Syrians burnt their children in the fire at Amalek and Amashat, the gods of Sarebo. So they feared the Lord and made themselves of the lowest them priests of the uh, uh, priests of high priests which sacrificed in the house of their high places. They feared the Lord and served other gods. So they just believed the Almighty was one of many gods. Let's keep going. Until this day, they do after the former matters, they fear not the Lord, neither do after their statutes and after their ordinance or after the law of the commandments of the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom they named Israel, which whom the Lord have made a covenant and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourself unto them, nor serve them. But the Lord brought you out of the land of Egypt, which great power and strength and arm, and he shall fear him, and there shall he worship, and to him shall you do sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinance and the law which I command you, which he wrote for you, you shall observe and to do forevermore, and you shall fear them. And the covenant which I made with you, you shall not forget, neither shall you fear other gods. But the Lord God you shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand of all your enemies. How about they did not hearken, but did after their own former manner? So these nations feared the Lord and served graven images, but their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. So Gentiles occupied. Israel. So when you get to the woman at the well, she was a Samaritan. Now, see this? Second Kings chapter 17. This is why the apostle says, why are you talking to her? Even though she was a Samaritan and she says, Jacob, my father, and she comes as if she was Israel. But she says, you being a Jew, you keep no company with us because they were taught the things of the most high, like these false Jews. But they weren't the people of the Most High. Because Israel, the people of the Most High, got taken out of the land. Ten tribes got taken out of the land. And when you read the Apocrypha, a land that was unapocryphied, right? It spread from one end of earth to another, right? So when you come to the woman at the well, and she was a Samaritan, she says, our fathers dig this well, Jacob's well. She's thinking she's Israel because she served her other gods and 
they were taught the things of the Most High. They kept that custom, right? But she wasn't Israel. She was not Israel. That woman of the will was not Israel. She could claim, oh, if Jacob is her father, he built his will. But she knew, why are you talking to me? You Jews don't keep company with Samaritans. Because we know that they don't belong in that land. Our people got taken out of the land, just like we got taken out of Judah. So, now let's deal with Judah's sin. That is what started Deuteronomy 28. Let's see Judah's sin dealing with idolatry. The breaking point for them, which sent them into Babylon. Ezekiel chapter 8. And we're going to start. Most of the long reading is over. Those were just the longest reading. So now it's going to go a little bit faster paced. Ezekiel. Actually, yeah, I got to read one more chapter. Ezekiel chapter 8, but this is fast. And it came to pass in the sixth year and the sixth month from the fifth day of the month, I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me and the hand of the Almighty fell upon me. And behold, the likeness of the appearance of fire and the appearance of the lions even downward and his loins even upwards and the appearance of brightness is the Lord, the color of amber. Uh oh, so once again, color of amber. Look up that. You don't see no white angels or no uh, Amashiach or the people that visit. Coming in white. I don't know why they make all these white angels. And he put forth the form of his hand, and he took me by the lock of my head, and the Spirit lifted me up uh, between the earth and heaven, and brought me the visions of the Almighty to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate towards the north, which is the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes a jealousy. He says, Remember, we read, I am the Almighty, a jealous God, visiting iniquity upon the fathers to the sons of the third and fourth generation. All right, so let's keep going. All right? So, in, he, uh, in um, verse 4, And behold, the glory of the Almighty of Israel was there, according to the visions that I saw on the plain. Then he said unto me, Son of man, lift up thy eyes, uh, eyes now in the way towards the north. So I lifted up my eyes towards the north, and behold, at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy is, is in the entrance. And he said, Furthermore, Son of man, see if thou what they do, even the great abominations of the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far away from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations, right? And he brought me to the door of the court. Now he's at the court of the temple. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I dig in the wall, behold, a door. And he said, uh, go in, and he said unto me, Go in, and behold, the wickedness that they do. So I went into the door, and behold, the forms of creeping things, abominational beasts, and of all idols in the house of Israel portrayed on the wall round about. So even in the temple, they were doing idolatry. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And the midst stood Jezananim, the son of Shephan. Every man had a censer in his hand and thick cloud of the incense. And they said, and, and then he said unto me, Son of man, has thou not seen these ancients of the house of Israel doing dark? Every man in his chamber. Uh, chamber of his imagery for they say the Lord seeth not the Lord for, forsaketh not the earth so these ancient men were worshiping false gods in the temple and he said also me turn thee yet again and I shall see greater abominations than they do and he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house which is towards the north and behold there sat a woman weeping for Tasmos that's a false god so she's at the door crying praying to a false god at the Lord's temple let's keep going then he said unto me, Has thou not seen this, O son of man? Turn yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch of the altar, there were about five and twenty men, and their backs towards, towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces towards the sun. And they worshiped the sun towards the east. So their back is towards the temple, and out of the temple they're praying to the sun God. In the Almighty's temple. That's like the, there's one thing if your wife cheated on you, but there's one thing if she cheated on you, on your bed. She brought another man on your bed. Israel will be the equivalent of you, it, it, your, your, your mom, your wife takes, or your husband will say whatever. You saved up money to buy a house, or your, your, she takes things out of your house that you work hard for and gives it to another man she's been cheating with. She takes your belongings, or your car, or your whatever, kitchen appliances, whatever, right? 
She takes your money, that your, your bank account money, and spends it on another man that she's cheated on. And then Judah, is far, I think, is far worse. They just brought the man in. They serve gods in the temple. In the temple. And this is the key point. This was the breaking point. He dealt with them and chastised them. But once Israel took the things of the Most High and worshipped other gods with that, he spread them out. And they never came back. They never came back. Gentiles occupy Samaria to today. Today, if you go to Samaria, Gentiles will be there. Let's keep going. Then he said, I'm saying, has it not seen this son of man? Is it the house of Judah? They commit the abominations which they commit here, yet they fill the land with violence and they return and provoke me to anger and, and, and they put a branch to their nose. Therefore, I will deal in fury. My eyes shall not spare, neither have pity. Thou shalt cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I will not hear them. He said, I'm going to deal with them because of that. And he did deal with them because he sent them into Babylon. But let's go with uh, Jeremiah 25. Jeremiah 25. A couple more scriptures and we're done now. See, before the Almighty passes judgment, he always sends someone to warn you. He sends someone to warn you like, hey, that's a bad idea. Have you ever warned a buddy, hey, get it in? That sounds like a Ponzi scheme or that sounds like a pyramid scheme or that sounds like that's probably and they don't want to hear or they come for your advice like they did in Jeremiah too. They come for your advice, but they're hoping you're going to give them the counsel of something. They, are, they already have their mind made up of what they're going to do, but they come like seeking like, like they're honest or they're sincere and they're hoping you will agree with what they already have intent to do. But when you give them advice or counsel opposite of what they want, no, oh yeah, and they move on to do what they want to do anyways. That's how Israel was. These prophets came. Sometimes they say, hey, we'll obey the Almighty. And then he gives them advice. No, we're not going to do that. Jeremiah 25, 1 through 11. The word of the Almighty came... Um, concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jeroboam, the son of king of Judah, which was the first year that never came ever king of Babylon, and, um, that which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, For thy thirteenth year, Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, there is three and twenty year, the word of the Almighty came unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, but you have not hearkened. And the Lord hath sent unto you all the servants, the prophets, rising early and sending them, but you have not hearkened, nor inclined your ear to hear. They said, Turn ye now, every one, into his evil way, and from the evil of your doings, and dwell in the land, Lord, I have given you in your fathers forever and ever. And go not after other gods, nor serve them, nor worship them, nor provoke me to anger, which you works of your hands, and I will do you no hurt. Yet you have not hearkened unto me, said the Almighty, that you might provoke me to anger with the works of your hands and of your own hurt, to your own hurt. Therefore, thus said the Lord, because you have not heard my words, behold, I will send and I will take all the families of the north, said the Lord, and never can ever king of Babylon, my servant, and I will bring them against thy land and against thy inhabitants, against all the nations round about, and I will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and a hissing and a perpetual desolation. Moreover, I will take from you them of the mirth and the gladness and the, the voice of the bridegroom and the verse of the bride and the sound of my stones and the light, and the whole land shall be a desolate and astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. So he sent them into captivity. He sent Judah into captivity. He said he made a promise that he will always leave us a remnant. And that's why Judah and small portions of the tribes were able to come back to Israel. And so when you see Israel today, the small little, not even one tenth of what it was. And yeah, there's different tribes there. I mean, not now, but when they came back out of Babylon, there were still people from Benjamin and people from the other tribes. Because not everyone, every single individual, but the majority of the ten tribes that went out. And then when we went and when we went into captivity, I'll tell you, in the time of trans like slave trade, like 90% of the Hebrews went out. Are there still some remnants in Africa, like Ebos, the tribe of Ebos and whatnot, right? So um, we see these two sins is what 
when we when we deal with idolatry, people take idolatry light. This is why these camps have these false graven images of, of the Messiah, uh, Mashiach, right? This is why everyone wants it. They play around with idolatry like it's not a big sin. The Almighty's not playing with that. He he put curses on us that last to this day because they want to serve false gods. When it says we walk by faith and not by sight, why do, why do I need an image? Why do I need something tangible? This, this image, I keep telling people, this image isn't going to make me keep the commandments any better. These fringes, even though I wear fringes, does it make me keep the commandments anymore? If you have the spirit, he says that you can look at these fringes and remember, hey, I need to keep the commandments. But does that image, oh man, I had a hard time stop smoking weed, but once I had this cross or this dove or this picture of Amashiach, man, I look at that picture and man, I'm able to stop smoking weed. I was able to stop cussing. I was able to stop committing fornication. Once I had that image, and I've seen that image when I walk outside every day. I look at, no, it don't. We walk by faith and not by sight. I don't need anything tangible. That stuff does not make you obey any commandment. Either you believe or you don't. Either if you believe and you love him, you keep his commandments. Can you see love? Can you see love? You see attributes. You see actions. You let me keep my commandments. You can't see your husband's love. You could just see his the results of something invisible. He says he loves you and he tries to make your life comfortable. He gives you a kiss before he leaves the work or he buys you flowers. But you can't see love. All you can see is a manifestation of the love he has for you. There's no, you have faith that he loves you. You can't see love. You, your children can't see you love them, that you're willing to die for them. They'll figure that out when you buy them something and you protect them and you send them to the best schools and you educate them. They know you love them, but they can't see it. And it's the same thing with faith. If you have faith, why do you need something tangible? Why do you have to have a graven image? If you have faith, then you don't walk by sight. So, last couple of scriptures. Deuteronomy 18. We're almost done. I'm a little long with it today, but we're good. Deuteronomy 18, three more scriptures and we're done. And then the last part of Deuteronomy 28, we'll really jump started it. Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. Let's get it. I will raise up them a prophet among thy brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in thy mouth, and thou shalt speak unto him. He shall speak unto them, and I shall command that, that all that I command him. And it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. So he's talking about someone's going to come in the likeness of Moses. But they didn't receive it. They crucified Amashir, right? What did Moses do? He took the people in the wilderness and talked to people in the wilderness. What did Amashir do? He went to the wilderness and talked to people. What did, uh, uh, what did Moses do? He fed the people and through him. Manna came down and the quails came and water came out of the rock. And like manna, when he was in the wilderness, he fed the people with fishes and with loaves. He fed the people in witness. He, he talked to people. He talked to people and he um, healed the people. When Moses came out, the Almighty healed all the people that came out across the Red Sea, it says none, none had a hunchback or anything. Everyone was in good shape. They may have been old, but everyone was in healthy shape when he came. When the Almighty came, he did nothing but heal sicknesses and diseases. Let's go with Luke 23. Luke 23, verse 21. Luke 23, verse 21. I get my Bible. Bible kind of throws me off. Luke 23, verse 21. Let's get it. But they cried, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. And he said unto them the third time, What evil have he done? I found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise them and let him go. But they were instant with a loud voice requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. 
So it wasn't just the priests. It was the people too, saying crucify him. Now Amashiach came, salvation came, and they rejected him. Some even called him the devil. And he says, there's no forgiveness for that. Some even called him the devil. And because of that, that was the last straw. You crucified your salvation. You fought against the Most High. And then, bam. During that time, shortly after he died, during the time of the apostles, there was a Hebrew revolt or a Jewish revolt. The true Jew revolt, true Hebrews revolted against Romans' rule. And they destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple. Millions of us fled into Africa. Years later, transatlantic slave trade came in, spread from one end of the earth to another. His word would not come by void. Some may get fulfilled this year, 200 years later, another part might be fulfilled. Yeah, that's just how it works. Just like in Revelation, some things get fulfilled at this time, other things get fulfilled later. Some of Daniel's visions got fulfilled already, some were waiting to be fulfilled, right? So, last scripture, Colossians. Colossians. First uh, Corinthians, I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2, starting at verse 6. It says, how about we, how, how be it, we speak wisdom among, among them that are perfect. You, ye, yet not the wisdom of the world, nor the princes of the world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of the Most High in mystery, even the hidden wisdom of the Almighty ordained before the world of glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they knew it, they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. Now, had they known this. He said they would have not crucified him. Verse 9, But it is written that I have not seen nor the ear heard, neither have there entered into the heart these things that the Almighty prepared for them that love him. But the Almighty reserved it to them, uh, uh, to, uh, reserved them unto us by the Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, yea, the think things of the Almighty. So he hid his knowledge because their heart was hardened. He hid who he truly was. So they crucified him. But it says, had he not, they had not known, they wouldn't have crucified him. Have you ever seen that show called uh, like Undercover Boss? Where like the owner of, of a company, a food chain or whatever comes in and comes in as a, as a normal employee. And he comes in as a hardworking employee and he follows the rules of the book. And he does like, he works how he wants his workers to work. And he sees people cut corners. He sees people do this. He sees people do that. And they don't know that he's the owner of the company. They think he's just an employee. Some of them are rude. So Amashir came on the scene and he showed you how to live righteous. He showed you how to use the word to overcome Satan's temptation. He, she, she, he, she shows you how to fast. He shows you how to take time and go and pray. Find a place of prayer, your prayer closet where you went to the Mount of Olives. He shows you how to take care of the poor and the needy. He shows you how to teach people. He was an example of how we need to live. He came down in the flesh, almighty manifested in the flesh, and showed us that you could live a sin-free life and you could overcome sin. Follow my example. And they didn't know that. He did nothing but bless people and heal people. And these priests and these people said, crucify him. And then when it's revealed in the show that, oh, he's the owner of the company, they're like, oh. Had I known that, I, I wouldn't have left earlier. Had I known that, I wouldn't have been rude to you. Had I known that, I wouldn't have, Yeah, I know. I know. I, I, I didn't want you to know. I want, you, I want to see how you really are. I want to see how you really are. Like a perfect example, I tell Winnie all the time, like, you know, we got some investments that, Lord willing, these things come through, I could be able to retire early. And I say, hey, man, when I, when I retire early, I'm going to try to buy, like, McDonald's shirts and Target and Walmart shirts, and I'm going to do it clean, and I'm going to just wear them everywhere I go. And let them, I want to see how people act, how, how people treat me when they think I just work at McDonald's. 
I don't need to floss and do this and, it, it, oh, you know, I, you have money, so I treat you a little bit better or I act a little bit different or all this or I'll try to be your friend. No, show you how you really are around people. And those people that are generally cool, those are people, hey, they'll be some cool people. You know what I'm saying? It's like a professional basketball player trying to find a wife when he's already like, you know, he's a millionaire. Yeah, good luck. Hopefully you could find a woman that had your back when you had nothing. You know? It's like a woman when she's overweight and someone loved them when they were overweight and then they get in shape. You know, they get in shape and whatnot. And then these same dudes that didn't want nothing to do, and I get it, you need attraction, but you'll be amazed how much more attention she get. You know? But a lot of them will leave their husband. A lot of them will leave their husband. So you see how they are when they're overweight and they lose some weight. And the husband still loves them the same, but they end up leaving. To the point to where when they get a gastric bypass, they have them do in California at least a, a, a marriage counseling course. Because the divorce rate is so high that shortly after she loses the weight, her options to better men open up and she leaves her husband. So you know how she really was. Oh, now that you lost weight. Oh, okay. Oh, now that you got money. Oh, okay. Now that you get this. Oh, okay. You see how people change? And like matter, all my sheep came on the scene. Came as a servant. Washed the apostles' feet. Did nothing but be a servant to people. Healed people. Healed diseases. It says, had they known that, they wanted to crucify them. But he blinded them. He wanted to see who really wants to serve him. John the Baptist, the poorest prophet, or one of the poorest prophets in the Bible. The greatest prophet was the poorest prophet. So anyone that came and repented and got baptized by John the Baptist, they were sincere. They were sincere. Because he didn't come in nicely dead clothes and come with this and do this like some of these prosperity preachers. He didn't come on $3,800 suit or whatever, right? He came camel skins, eating locusts and honey, a poor person, but he taught truth. And the honest people, they came and repented. In like manner, he hid these from these people because they were dishonest. This is their heart was gross. He hid these people. And that's why they went into captivity. That's why we're in captivity to this day. But back to what I'm saying is the two reasons why idolatry is so bad is because you see that once Israel did that, they never recovered. They never, they got kicked out of the land and never came back. Never came back to this day. Israel, Judah, when we crucified our Savior and called him the devil, when we became a mini antichrist and denied Christ, right? A little demon walking around, right? When we decided they'd do that and said crucify him, bam, we got done. Destroyed the temple, we went into captivity and never came back. In like manner, it says, despise not the chastening of the Lord, for who the Lord, Lord, but he rebuketh. And chastise like every son that he receiveth. It says that he may be a partaker of his holiness. When a believer sins, say we fall down, we get upset, we say something, whatever. Almighty, forgive me, I done mess up. We confess our faults, dust ourselves off, repent, and don't do it again, right? He still chastises. So in the day of judgment, when we stand before him, our robes are clean and white. It says he remembers our wickedness no more. When we stand before him and we are judged and the books are open, we make it because we got dealt with while we were still alive. These sinners, majority of their sins, it says it follows after them. So when they're in the day of judgment, there'll be a person, count one, Murder, adultery, breaking the Sabbath, eating pork, pagan holidays, count this, count this, count this, count this. Your sentence is eternal life in the lake of fire. Right? When thus, it's like, well done, my good and faithful servant, come to the joy of the Lord. Now, when he sets up new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem, and he's going to bring his people back, the ones that are living holy, not the sinner Hebrews, and he's going to bring these people back, we had to pay we have to pay. Israel have judgment must begin in the house of God, in the house of God, to the Jews first, and then to the Gentiles. This is why we have to go into captivity, because all these other nations that worship other gods, He's going to deal with them, but He's going to deal with His children first. 
And this is why our captivity is from one end of the earth to another. This is why our stuff is forever. Because when he sets up new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem, and he sets up his children to reign again, and all nations shall pour into them, we pay for ours. We pay for ours. When he rules this next world with the yoke of honor, with the yoke of iron, we already paid for ours now. Our kids got sold, got sent out for alligator bait to catch alligators. They'll take some of the slaves' children, little newborn babies, and use them for alligator bait just to have some alligator shoes or an alligator belt. Right? That happened to us. Because judgment must begin at the house of God to the Jews first. Then also the Gentiles. And all this happened because they needed some kind of image. And they needed to pray. And it says the just shall live by faith. For you to have something that you need to see is to make up for your lack of faith. Ooh, I'll show you this. Let's draw this out real quick. Because we're done. That's the last scripture we'll pray out. All right. You got right a hundred percent faith. You don't. You don't need an image. You don't need an image. You don't need that. Could be zero percent. You don't need to look at anything. You got a hundred percent faith. But if you got fifty percent faith, fifty percent right, then what's going to make up the rest? Your little cross. I'm not even going to draw it. I'll just put idol. Right? That's just the makeup for your lack of faith. Why do you need to have a star? Why do you need to have a fish bumper sticker? Why do you need a dove? Why do you need a cross? Why do you need a picture of the Messiah? Whether it's the Caps picture, or a lion with the crown on it, or a lion with the Urim and a Thurim on it, with jewels and whatnot. Why do you need that? Please explain how does that make you serve the Almighty any better? It doesn't. Because it says we walk by faith and not by sight. Leave those idols alone. You will not make it into the kingdom of God. You've seen what... Let's go to Judges. You don't have to... We're, not gonna, we're just going to do Judges. Alright? Let's go to Judges. Alright? Start with Judges, because Judges is when he, Joshua died. And let's go, let's go all the way to Malachi. When he rebuilt the temple. You see this? You see this? All this from Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah, all these prophets... The kings, the judges, all this is them dealing with idolatry and the God punishing them. This judge rises up, they get out, they go back to sin, the Almighty punishes them. Then another, then Samson comes up. Then we have kings, and this king's, you know, Saul's dealing with witchcraft. And then this king has, Solomon makes graven images. And this king did right, this king did that. This king made graven images, this king didn't make graven This whole, look, look at how much this book, right here. Is dealing with idolatry. It's dealing with them making this king set up graven images, this king didn't. The whole time. Dealing with Israel. Dealing with Israel. At what point do you realize why do some of these camps and these churches don't get it? Leave these images alone. I don't understand why you can't just have a hundred percent faith. Thomas, unless I put my hand in, listen, we just dealt with that day one. It says, blessed is those that have seen, but more blessed are those that believe and have not seen. I don't need nothing to make up my lack of faith. I just have faith. I have faith. So, so that's it. Be done. Keep standing. Don't drop standing. Get almighty hand clap. Shalom. All right, cool.